Good morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels YouTube channel. This channel is for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. So today I want to do a message to clarify some things that I spoke about in a recent video, and that video was titled something like uh, Recognizing and Overcoming the Spirit of Jezebel. It was something to that effect. <laughs> But I, I don't actually recall how I titled it at this moment. But I'm sure that those of you who follow my channel will be aware of the video that I'm referring to. So I, I want to speak about something that, that we might call the principle of salt and light. And the reason why I'm talking about this is to clarify some of the ways that we as Christian women minister to the world, whether it be to our families or the world as a whole. Now, I'd like to begin, first of all, with 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. And in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, we read, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The reason why I'm beginning with this particular scripture is to, to let people know that it's become the fashion these days to attend a church or to listen to an online ministry and have the person who is presenting the material do for you all the work. So rather than get into the word oneself, one is encouraged rather to hear the word from another person and not to study for yourself. And the problem with this is, is that if you don't know the truth, it's very easy for someone to deceive you. So it's very easy for a person, for example, to, to take a passage of scripture and, and concoct a the theology all around that scripture, which is not a, a theology that is found in the Bible. So in order to really know the truth, one must study for themselves. And that the reason why I put the scriptures that I use in a video in the description box is so that you can go back later and study out the subject for yourself. Because I'm not a religious authority. I am just your sister and wanting very much to share with you some things that the Lord has shown me that have been beneficial in my walk. So, along the topic of salt and light, the reason why I want to cover this is because when we speak the truth to people about sin, we have to be very careful as Christian women how we do this. And actually, someone had approached me with some questions about this, and I, I realized that maybe I wasn't exactly clear about what I meant when I said, for example, that we should not be silent about sin, that we should not give silent assent to sin, and what, what it really means to, to speak the truth in love. So now I want to cover that in a bit more detail. Let's go to the book of Colossians, chapter 4. Colossians, chapter 4. And this is a, a very clear passage of the scripture which speaks to this issue in a way that's easy to understand. So Colossians chapter 4 and verses 5 and 6. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. So this means, of course, when we're, when we're walking in the world, we should walk in wisdom and this is how we conduct ourselves in the world. So to those that are without, to, to those that are without Christ, those that are unsaved, that we walk in wisdom in our ministry as Christian women, redeeming the time. And then in verse 5, we read, Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. So, if 
our speech is always with grace. That would imply that while we do, we are not silent about sin, we also don't go about in the world pointing out sin everywhere that we see it, because this would not be speaking with grace. And of a truth, when we are a, a Christian, when we speak the gospel to people, when we speak anything to them, it's for their benefit and not for our benefit. A common mistake that young Christians make is they read the commandment of Jesus Christ in, in the end of the book of Matthew, to go into the, the whole world and preach the gospel. And, and many young Christians are very eager to please the Lord. And what they, they do, and particularly I'm referring to those who are young in the faith who are sisters here. So sisters who are young in the faith go about in the world preaching the gospel to everyone that they run into, and they do so in a way where they recognize the sin in someone, and they point it out, thinking that that will bring that person to repentance. But this is not a graceful way for a Christian woman to behave. And we have to always remember that as Christian women, our first way of ministering to people is by the way that we're walking and our example. So a Christian woman, while she might be very aware that most of the women around her are dressed very immodestly, she is not going to point that out to people in situations where she does not have some kind of relationship with that person and also has a reason to speak that to the person, which is for their benefit. And when I said that one should not be in a silent ascent to sin, I didn't mean to imply that one should go about in the world pointing out sin wherever we see it. Because if we were to do that, it would only offend people and it would not bear any fruit at all. Now, what is it that we do then? What is it that we do? Well, one thing that we can understand is that if our speech is with grace, that grace would be an example of the grace and mercy of God that we have experienced. So when a person sees that they're a sinner and they're looking for God, first of all, they don't need their sin pointed out to them. So to point it out with someone who's already in a condition of repentance would be to kind of beat them over the head with something that might offend them then because they're already feeling bad about their sin. But if someone's in the world and they're unaware of the Holy Scripture and, and they don't know that there's something wrong with what they're doing, we look upon that and, and think about it from the perspective of how we could lift that person up rather than to come at, at them like a religious person from above and tear them down. So we can read of the, the way that we don't want to be in the Holy Scripture. Let's turn to the book of Proverbs, chapter 13, and verse 10. Only by pride cometh contention, but with well-advised is wisdom. So if we as young Christians go about in the world pointing out sin, that this is a manifestation of the pride of the flesh that thinks that now that we're saved, it's our job to go around and point out sin in everyone that we see. And this is a form of pride. And of course, it's also a form of hypocrisy because it's a condition where one has forgotten what they've been saved from very recently. And while a person might do this from, from the intention of wanting to help people, at least they can recognize that it's not helpful. And what happens is it causes people to, to reject the word because of the way that we're presenting it. So with the well-advised is wisdom. Well, what does that mean? So if we go now back to Colossians 4. Colossians chapter 4. And we'll read again here. Let your speech be always with grace. So with 
manifesting the grace and mercy of God. So with an attitude of wanting to help the other person and speaking to them in a way that they're going to be able to hear it to the best of our ability, seasoned with salt. Now, salt is a seasoning. And if one were to take the entire salt shaker and dump it out on a plate of food, that food would be inedible. So we don't do that with people. We season with salt. And that means that our words here and there, they are salty. They say the truth, but they don't dump it on people. They don't force it upon people. Because a spice is a seasoning that brings savor and, and, and makes something highly beneficial to eat. It's good for you to eat a little bit of salt. But too much salt makes it very distasteful to the person who's eating it. So it's a matter of noticing that when we speak to the, the truth to people about sin, we also consider how we present it to the person so that they will be able to hear it, or whether or not they even need to hear that in a particular moment. Knowing that someone is in sin isn't always necessary for us to speak. And we want to always be looking for the benefit of the person that we're speaking to and not to be exalting ourselves in any way. You know, when Jesus Christ commanded his disciples to go into all the world and preach the gospel to people, he, he wasn't saying to go into all the world and beat people over the head <laughs> with the gospel. And he wasn't saying that to do it from the motive of, if you don't preach the gospel to people, you're going to hell. So therefore, go into the world and preach the gospel out of fear for yourself, for your own eternal life. Rather, when we preach the gospel to, to people, it's not from a selfish motive like that, even though it's true that if we don't preach the gospel, if we're not faithful in that respect, that we won't enter the kingdom. That's true. But we don't preach the gospel for that reason. We preach the gospel to people because they need it and because they're in need of salvation. And when we point out sin, we do so only when it is for the edification of the person that we're pointing it out to. So giving silent assent to sin. The difference between giving silent assent and, and silently agreeing with sin and speaking with salt into a person's life might be described like this. When we speak with salt, first of all, we, we are listening to the person and what they're saying and looking for an opportunity where some salt would be beneficial to them. Now, for a sister in particular, it's important to recognize that some of the things that might be appropriate for a man of God to do are not appropriate for a sister to do. So a woman should, who's in ministry should never go about in the world ministering the gospel in a way that's outside of God's order regarding men and women. So she should not interrupt a man while he's working. She should not come at him with, I know the truth about the gospel and you need to hear what I have to say. Because while that is true, they, that man might need to hear the gospel, and he might very well benefit from hearing it, that when a woman approaches a man in this way, it's not going to be received. But it's also true when sisters are ministering to other women, not to come at them from above. Because when we, when we do so, it offends people. Rather, we want to come up from underneath and lift them up. So when I spoke about having sympathy for sin and, and how having sympathy for sin is something that we don't want to do, so we don't want to give assent to sin, that does not mean that we don't have sympathy for the sinner. So, for example, say someone, we're in, in the world, and we see that someone is suffering 
because of sin. It would be wrong to approach that person by pointing out their sin. Rather, it would be better to come at them from underneath and say something like, I was once in a situation as you are, and I found the answer in Jesus Christ, and this is what he's done for me. And of course, speak that truthfully. If you haven't been in the situation that, that you're seeing in someone else, then don't say that, because we don't, we don't preach the gospel as a lie. We don't lie about ourselves. But if, if it's a situation where the person doesn't have an experience that we individually can we have had, pardon me, I speak English, we can relate it to a similar experience. And we can say something like, you know, I have never been in the place that you're in, but I can see that it's very, very difficult. I was in some pretty hard straits in my life. And they're, while they're not the same as yours, they are thus. And you might say something about some condition of sin in your past that's relatable to it. So the person knows that you're not coming at them like a religious Pharisee, someone who's, who's condemning the sinners. You know, the Pharisees criticized Jesus for eating with publicans and sinners. And Jesus said, those that are are righteous don't need what I have to say and I'm not saying that how he said it but he said only the sick are in need of a physician but the religious people criticized Jesus for associating with sinners and we can very easily fall into a Pharisee like stance with people without even knowing it where where we're trying to help people but doing so based on some misunderstandings just about how the world works and what what people can receive. So only by pride cometh contention. So if we present the truth to someone and they reject that truth, then we don't argue about it. And the reason why is because often, if we're speaking from the Word of God, even if somebody initially rejects it, that that seed has been planted. And sometimes that seed will do much better at taking root in that person's heart if we don't contend about it. We simply say it once and then we leave it alone because the word determines who is going to hear and who isn't going to hear. That's not our job. It's only our job to speak the truth in love. So say, for example, our daughter comes to us and she is wearing a very short skirt. And she says, Mom, what do you think of my skirt? We might say to her, well, that looks pretty short to me. And if you're going to wear that out in public, you know, you're going to attract men's sexual interest in you. And I, I really don't recommend that you wear that. And if she gets insulted and stomps off to her room and wears it anyway, if she's an adult, there's nothing that we can do about that. We can't forbid her to, to do that. So what we do is we, we stop talking about it and we let her go. And that word in her heart, if we don't contend about it, that, that seed will crackle and twist. And, and when she has experiences out in the world where she gets some unwelcome, lusting attention from a man that's not respectful, that word will crackle and twist and the seed will perhaps break open in our heart. But if we argue with her about it, if we contend about it and try to convince her about it and become very critical and say, you know, say something, you know, offensive to her, such as you're dressed like a prostitute. Okay, statements like that are not going to help anyone especially coming from a, a woman. So we, we don't make statements about, like that to individuals. And, and when someone doesn't hear the word that we say, when it's the word of God, then the word will do the work, and we don't have to. And if we're contending with someone, though, what will happen is that person will be in contention with us and more resistant to hearing the word. Now, the salt and light principle goes something like this, that Jesus said, let your light shine, so shine before men, 
that they see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So our light shines by what we do. When we are modestly dressed, that that alone speaks volumes. And if someone asks us our opinion about their clothing or for guidance about their clothing, then we can answer them. But we don't go about in our families or in the world criticizing people because this just causes people to rebel. The light is something that we put on a candlestick. We don't hide our light. So the way that we walk is not only according to our dress, but it's according to having a graceful demeanor, a meek and a quiet spirit. You know, people are much more curious about what a person has to say if they're not saying a lot. So let's consider this. If we go to the book of Proverbs chapter 17. Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 28. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise, and he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. Sometimes the, the fewer words that we speak, the better. And especially when we speak, to always be careful that we're speaking what Jesus, that in the manner that Jesus Christ would speak. And in particular, speaking with the desire to benefit the other person. This is the grace and mercy of God. God sent his own son, his only begotten son, into the world to die for human sin. And this is grace. And we should have the same demeanor to make ourselves servants to the world, to be meek as Jesus Christ was meek, to be lowly of heart, to only be seeking the benefit of the other. And then if they reject it, we know that they're rejecting the word and not rejecting our flesh. We are not superimposing our own ideas about what that other person needs from an above-down situation, but rather we're listening for what they need and listening to Jesus in our heart to tell us how to speak to that person in love. Because sinners need the gospel, yes, but they need the love of Jesus. And that's a big part of the gospel. It's not just about pointing out sin. And it's not just about righteously, self-righteously going around doing something at people rather than doing something for people. Now, light is something that we don't hide. So we, we, we let our light shine before men so that they can see our good works. And our good works are things like mercy, kindness, gentleness, patience, long-suffering. Those fruits of the Spirit are the light that we shine, particularly as sisters. And the salt that we that we speak into the word, world, so our words, must be spoken with grace in, in the right season with wisdom as to what would be beneficial to another person. Always speaking in a humble way and always being willing to stop talking the minute someone indicates that they don't want to hear that, what we have to say. As sisters, we don't go around arguing and contending about the truth of God's word. However, when I'm saying this, I'm not saying to withhold salt when someone asks you. If we go to the book of Psalms, and we'll read Psalm 119 and verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So when we speak salt to people, it should be the salt of the word. The word is what they really need. It's not about how we present it so much. So it's not about how many words we speak or how right we think we are or how much we can prove things according to the sisters. The, 
according to, pardon me, according to the scripture. It's about God's word. And when we're walking in the light of God's word, then what we're speaking is going to be the light of God's word. When we're walking in the world, there is sin everywhere. And if we try to, to go around thinking that we're shining light by correcting people about their sin, what we're really doing is just creating a lot of confusion and endless striving and debate and contention and attracting a lot of negative attention to ourselves because of the mistake that we're making. So rather than do that, we have to remember what it is that's our source of truth and how we were saved, representing ourselves as an example of humility, of grace, of gentleness, of wisdom. You know, people are much more likely to be interested in what we have to say if we are actually walking the walk. So, you know, people talk about, well, you talk the talk, but do you walk the walk? So someone who's quick to criticize, quick to condemn other people actually has a spirit of religious hypocrisy because that's not what Jesus did. And even though he did occasionally point out sin, it was usually when sinners came and contended with him. He didn't go out of his way to argue with people. And he didn't go out of his way to people to try to prove that he was right or that he was pleasing to his father. Rather, he accepted that he was pleasing to his father. He knew that in his heart because he dwelled in his father's presence. He was in prayer constantly, and he was in the word. He got his source. His source was his father, and he had his father's spirit dwelling in him. So he wasn't trying to prove his own righteousness. Rather, whenever he spoke, he did so to the benefit of others. Now, when people come and argue with us as sisters, the best response for a Christian sister is, is to not contend. Because the minute we start to contend, our pride enters in. And while Jesus did point out pretty harshly some things about the Pharisees, that doesn't mean that that's something a sister should do. Maybe that's appropriate for a man of God to do. But for a woman of God, it really isn't, because it's taking authority. And we don't take authority. We walk as servants. So when someone comes to us and makes some kind of accusation or is contentious with us, the best thing to do is to simply say, well, yeah, I hear, hear that you're saying that, but I'm sorry, that's not what the Word of God says. And, and I, I don't want to argue about what the Word of God says. And stop. And stop there. Because when we get involved in debating with people and proving that we're right, that this has to do more with pride than it does with love. Now finally, let's go to the book of Philippians, chapter 2. Philippians, chapter 2, and verse 15. Well, let's actually start with verse 13. We read here, For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Well, that certainly said what I just spent almost half an hour saying in a very short passage of the Bible. But, you know, when we read the scripture, it's so beautifully put that, that we, don't, we don't complain, we don't dispute, we, we want to be blameless and harmless. We don't want our words to be harmful to people. And we don't want people to be able to see that hypocrisy in us and point it out. Because then what we're contending about more is our own self-righteousness and not the word of God. So when we speak, we want to speak in a way that 
that we're holding forth, and we'll read here in verse 16, holding forth the word of life. So when we hold forth the word of life, we do so not proclaiming our own righteousness. Rather, we're holding out the grace of God that we have experienced ourselves and knowing that we were saved from our sin. If we contemplate that and remember what it is that we've been saved from, then we're more likely to speak to people in a humble way, holding forth the word of life where the word is what they see, not us. So I hope this message is beneficial to you. And it's certainly been uh, a delight for me to get into the word about this. There are many more things I could say about salt and light. But basically, salt is a seasoning, and it needs to be dispensed with grace and, and not overdone and not done in such a way as, as to beat down a sinner. And, and light is something that we shed abroad freely. And, and we don't hide our light. So we speak the word of God, and we do so in love. We live the word of God as well. So our example of faith is our testimony as well. So it would be very hypocritical for us to point out sins in other people in a self-righteous way. Because while we might be correct about their sin, we're not seeing our own pride, which is a sin to. Self-examination is so very important to remain in a condition of humility, remembering that we were once sinners too, not that long ago. Even if it was many years ago, it wasn't that long ago, because we all have things in us that God wants to correct. So when we're ministering to people, we want to make sure that what they see is the word, that that's what we're holding forth is the word of life, and for sisters in particular, to hold it forth with grace and humility, not contending, not criticizing, not reviling, but simply speaking the truth in love. And this will bear much good fruit. So feel free to email me if you have further questions or comment in the comment section below. I look forward to hearing from you.